Chapter 52 Reunion Harry knew the water would slow down his hunters, but they had come so close he had almost seen them, and they must have spotted him or his wake on the water. A cry had gone up, and he heard them charge into the flood. He bolted along the tunnel, trying to put some distance between himself and the monks. He could only hope the biting snakes or leeches that had attacked him would hinder them. The tunnel turned a corner and changed its character again. Here it was a square cross-sectioned hallway. Along each side of the hall there were rectangular cutouts in the rock walls. Many were empty, but most held boxes of wood, wicker or slate. Some of the wooden boxes had broken, and Harry could see the bones inside. This was a catacomb, a burial chamber. Harry hurried on. The ranks of coffins stretched into the distance. At intervals there were stone sarcophagi, some recumbent, others standing upright like guards. The monks could not be far behind now. Once they entered the long, straight catacombs, they would see Harry. There were no side tunnels. He would have to hide. He chose a rectangular stone sarcophagus. It was intact, no holes for the monks to see him inside. With desperate strength, Harry slid the thick lid to one side. There was a skeleton in the box, clad in silken rags, but still plenty of room available for him. He squeezed in, the bones cracking and crunching beneath him. He pushed his shoulders against the underside of the lid and shuffled and scraped it back into place. Exhausted, he flopped down behind the remains, panting and shivering with exertion. He listened carefully. After a couple of minutes, he could just make out the sound of voices and running feet. He doused his wand light and breathed as slowly as he was able. The voices grew louder, though barely audible through the stone casket. There was a faint padding of feet for a moment, then the voices receded. Harry lay still against the bones for several minutes in profound darkness. Eventually, he dared to hope that he had evaded the hunting party. He wanted to stay where he was, to be absolutely sure the monks had gone. But the need to rescue Hermione spurred him into action. It had been the last thing Ron had said to him. Harry lit his wand. He felt a crawling feeling in his skin. He was in someone else's coffin, after all, and he had desecrated the occupant's bones. He whispered an apology before turning around so that he could brace his back against the lid. The crawling feeling was still with him as he pushed up against the stone lid, trying to lift and slide it millimetres at a time. It did not move. Harry tried as hard as he could. He tried several times until his arms and legs shook with the effort. He could not move the lid. All the while the crawling in his skin grew until it hurt. He was stinging in a dozen places at once. The feeling was more urgent than his panic at being unable to move the lid. Harry picked up his wand and increased its brightness. There was a stinging itch on his arm. He rolled up his sleeve to see if anything was visible. He could see a tiny twitching in the muscle of his forearm, just in one spot. It was in the place where he felt the itching, burning sensation. He brought the glowing tip of his wand closer to his arm. He touched the sore spot. The twitching lump under the skin moved in response. There was something under the surface of his skin. Something was burrowing. Some things were tunnelling into his flesh. He felt revulsion and nausea and a sense of violation. With a wave of coldness, he realised the creatures in the water had not been biting him. They had been implanting something, larvae, into his body. Trapped inside this stone coffin, he was being eaten alive by worms. His friends had died because of him. Now he would die. This place was like a collection of nightmares, one after another. Harry felt the numbing depression sweep over him, as it had in the past. He could do no good, be of no use. He was past the tearing despair of guilt and into the broken, beaten hollowness beyond. Harry was back in his personal nightmare, and ready to let the worms eat him while he waited. Nightmare. 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 The word had echoed in his mind as he had thought it. It echoed in someone else's voice. Whose voice, he wondered listlessly. 
He supposed it didn't matter. But he knew it mattered. It was crucial. It had been Ambrose's voice. Ambrose had said, Nightmare. Because he was telling Harry something important. This was a nightmare, a dream. And who controlled dreams, used them as weapons? The Grey Watcher. None of this dungeon was real, just construction in the sick mind of the Watcher. Harry wondered when it had started. It can only have been when they walked through the illusory wardrobe in the junk room of the first tower. All Harry had to do was to wake up back in that place. Harry rolled over. Ron was unconscious beside him. Harry sat up and leaned over to shake Ron's shoulder. Ron! Ron! You're asleep! It's a dream! Nightmare! Wake the hell up! Ron stirred in his sleep. He raised his arm to push Harry away. Come on, Aura Weasley, Harry persisted. You're on duty. Ron wriggled, then turned over. Ron, Harry whispered. Look out! Hermione's coming! Ron jerked bolt upright. What? Harry? Harry! You're alive! But I saw you... Whatever has happened to you since we came into the junk room was a dream, Harry explained. Well, I think it was when we went through the wardrobe, and it was more of a nightmare than a dream. Bloody hell, Harry, said Ron. You're telling me it was a nightmare? You got killed and it was just me and Lavender. But I knew she'd look after me. And then she got killed. I was really down. I was prepared to give up. Yeah, same here, said Harry. I think the Watcher, or the Watcher's magic that Roll used, needed us to give up. Then it could kill us. Lavender, said Ron. They cast around the junk room. Lavender was on the floor behind a broken chair. She was asleep and twitching. It looked like she was running in her dream. I think she's fighting for her life, Harry said. We have to wake her before she dies. He took her by the shoulders and shook her. It made no difference. Harry turned to Ron. I think you're going to have to kiss her, mate. What? Why? Like in the fairy tales. True love's kiss. It's the only thing to wake a damsel. Is this lavender not a bloody damsel? Ron said. Just slap her. Are you insane? Is this a multiple choice quiz? I'm not slapping her, Harry said. She'll break my neck. <laughs> I'm not kissing her, Ron countered. I hate to think what she break of mine. Check her again. Harry shook her and said, Lavender, Stefano's here, wake up. Maybe it's Stefano she's fighting with in a dream, Ron suggested when she didn't respond. Maybe they're not fighting, said Harry. Okay, you pervs, I'm awake, said Lavender. I was just deciding which one of you I should hit first. She sat up and punched Harry playfully on the arm. He winced. Sorry, said Harry. I had to wake you up before the watcher got into your head and killed you, or whatever was happening. I was enjoying it, Lavender said. A dungeon full of monsters? Great fun. Okay, you two were dead, but hey, rough with the smooth. So where the hell is Hermione? said Ron. Mm-hmm, came Hermione's mumble from behind the fake wardrobe. Harry and Ron laughed with relief. Harry walked over and reached to untie Hermione's gag. You sure you want to do that, Harry? Ron quipped. Harry laughed and untied the length of rag. How the hell am I supposed to kiss you if I have a gag on? she asked Ron and grinned. There is that, of course, Ron admitted. You must be getting carried away with your bravery, Ron, joking about Hermione's gag like that, Lavender said. If you don't hurry up untying her, you'll be in trouble. Lavender? Is that Lavender Brown? Hermione said, as her bonds fell away and she stood up, shaking. Lavender grinned, and Hermione did something none of them would have expected. She hugged Lavender. We... we thought you died. Years ago, in the battle. Hermione stammered. Not quite, Lavender said. Long story short, I'm now a vampire-hunting werewolf. You know, that old thing. Hermione let go of Lavender and flung her arms around Ron. And you, Ron, she said, are magnificent. Well, yeah, Ron said. What has happened to Raoul and the others? Hermione asked, rubbing her wrists. Stefano got the better of Raoul, Lavender said. It wasn't easy. The Countess used something, 
one of the Watcher's weapons on Stefano. I thought she'd killed him. I kind of dismantled her for that. Then I staked her heart, which was not inside her at the time. You have to make sure. Vampires can be tricky. Roll is under arrest, but still in one piece, mostly. Stefano's at St. Mungo's. He'll live, I reckon. Well, in his undead sort of way. They'd better hope he does, or they will know my displeasure. Stefano Verdi? asked Hermione, still playing catch-up. I thought you said you hunted vampires, Lavender. Oh, yeah, she confirmed. Just thought I might keep this one. He's quite cute, though not as cute as he thinks he is. Nothing is as cute as Stefano thinks he is, Harry laughed. Except Ginny, of course. And Ron, Hermione said. They all fell silent. Yeah, said Ron with a shrug. Minority opinion, that one. 